Praise be the almighty Shogunate! Yes, you probably thought I was one of the guards from Inazuma, huh? Well, I'm not. I'm just a guy in his uh, stream room with a Ganyu body pillow talking about Raiden Shogun! Jesus, that's loud. Anyways, we're here to talk about Raiden Shogun. And of course, because of the fact that she just got another rerun, which is fantastic. And she works really, really well with one of the new units that just came out, Chevrus. And here today, we're gonna be talking about how you should build your Raiden Shogun right now, and also what you need to do to ascend her from level one to level 90, just in case you're one of the new ones here. So before we get into that, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell to be notified of when the next Genshin Impact video comes out. And of course, y'all, I am always sponsored by the ever wonderful Gamer subs. Uh, use code Tyson for 10% off at gamersubs.gg on your next purchase. And yeah, I'm rocking some blowhole blast. I went ahead and carbonated it as well. So, mm. oh, see, I love carbonation. So, but anyways, I'm done chilling. Let's go ahead and get into today's video. As you can see, we have Raiden Shogun right here, the Electro Polearm user from Inazuma, the Archon of Inazuma. I love her backstory, by the way. She's got a really, really good backstory in general. So let's go ahead and talk about her. First things first, we're gonna talk about how you ascend her. Now, you're gonna need these, these Amethyst Silver Fragments, Chunks, and Gemstones. These right here, these four bad boys. Now. First things first, let's talk about who you're gonna need to fight to get these. Well, there's plenty of different regular bosses out there, and I'm talking about the lower level bosses that will give you these materials. You have the uh, Electro Registvine, you have the new Seahorse that just came out in Fontaine, you have the uh, Electro Hypostasis, uh, and you have the Thundering Manifestation, which we will talk about a little bit later. But if you also wanna get extra brownie points, you could fight the Raiden Shogun world boss to get these materials as well now of course you're going to need one silver you're going to need nine fragments nine chunks and six gemstones i almost said three but you're going to need six of them and again remember the rules of three three silvers make a fragment three fragments make a chunk and three chunks make a gemstone excuse me but remember how we talked about thunder manifestation well you're going to need these the storm beads boss material now you get these from the thunder manifestation which is the electro bat and inazuma you're going to need 46 of these in total and you could get a minimum of two on the max difficulty with each run which means that you may have to fight this boss up to 23 times it is worth the battle trust me on that so make sure that you're farming these up and usually i tell people to kind of you know farm them up a little bit beforehand but this guy got out a little bit later i do apologize so make sure you're farming up your boss mats now you're also going to need these the amakumo fruits which are going to need 168 of these in total and these are the inazuma specialty item that you get around the thunder manifestation area as well i believe it's seirei island so you get about two of them with each plant so make sure that you're doing these it's about you can do one every two to three days so make sure that you get those done now of course we can't talk about inazuma without talking about one of the notable enemies that you're going to need to fight which is the nobushi now the nobushi dropped these the old handguards the kagauchi handguards and of course the famed handguards now if we go down here this will actually show you the grand total of what you're going to need you're going to need 18 of these old handguards you're going to need 30 of these kagauchi handguards and 36 of the famed handguards now again rules of three three olds make a kagauchi and three kagauchis make a famed pretty simple easy peasy and that's all you're really going to need to ascend your raiden shogun from level one to level 90. But what about talents you may think well let's talk about those talents really quick talent level ups i would definitely say for raiden shogun is an easy triple crown she definitely does deserve it whether it's a sub dps dps battery support whatever you're wanting to use her as she definitely deserves the triple crown if you don't want a triple crowner you could probably use her as a sub DPS and only focus on skill and burst, but trust me, I would highly recommend doing it because of her burst in general being so freaking cool. Now, let's go ahead and talk about what you're going to need to triple crown her. First things first, let's talk about these, the teachings of light, the uh, guides of light right next to it, and then followed by the philosophies of light. Now, these happen Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays in Inazuma. So if you want to farm these as soon as possible, 
make sure at the like this video is going to release on friday so make sure tomorrow that you farm these on saturday but of course if you farm them on sunday as well every other one is going to be open as well so make sure that you select the exact uh stage of the domain that you're going for now of course you're going to need nine of these teachings uh you're going to need 63 of the guides and 114 of the philosophies and remember three teachings make a guide three guides make a philosophy again hoyoverse has these rules of three thing i don't know why they love it so much now Speaking of rules of three, you're going to need more of the handguards. You're going to need 18 more of the old handguards. You're going to need 66 more of the Kagauchi handguards, and you're going to need 93 more of the famed handguards. And then follow that up with this world boss material that you get from Signora, the world boss Signora, which is not all that fun for me. I usually beat it really quickly and I don't have to worry about it too much. But Signora is there and you get these Molten Moments. Molten Moments, again, are the world boss drop for Signora. So you're going to need 18 of these in total and you can only get them once a week, which you usually can get two of the boss drops from it. So it's going to be a long grind, but it is worth it if you want to build up your Raiden Shogun. And then follow that up with three crowns of insight. I didn't talk about this in my Chevrolet video and I do apologize, which sucks. So if you're watching this after you watch the Chevrolet video and you made a comment about the crowns of insight, here's my explanation. I messed up. That's about it. So, and then of course, between all the talents and, you know, ascending from level one to level 90, you are going to need around 7.1 to 7.4 million Mora. So if you have that, great. If you don't, Come over. I have plenty of Mora. I can give you a small loan of a million Mora. That's for sure. Now, as you can see, we have my Raiden Shogun up right now. So let's go ahead and talk about her. I did actually fix my Raiden Shogun up a lot. And the reason why I say that is because my Raiden Shogun was rocking very low attack. Very, very low attack power. Um, I had a good chunk of crit rate, crit damage, and energy recharge. I believe my energy recharge at the time was 290, but there was a couple things that I didn't realize. Uh, Raiden Shogun actually caps out at 275, or not, not really Raiden Shogun, but the benefit of Raiden Shogun usually caps at around 275. Now, if you want a little bit of an extra squeeze, you could go for the 300, but it's not necessarily needed. Now, I also didn't have 2000 attack, which is a baseline for what you want for your Raiden Shogun anyway. So make sure that you are rocking enough attack to be able to use your crit rate and crit damage to your advantage, which is why my crit rate and crit damage is a little bit more fluctuated down on the lower side because the energy recharge is going to be the main focus, followed by the attack power helping us out a little bit, and then the crit rate and crit damage being the icing on the cake. Now, for me, for weapons wise, I went with Engulfing Lightning because Engulfing Lightning is her best weapon. That's just a given. Now, Engulfing Lightning goes as follows. Energy Recharge is the main stat with 55.1%, which is a bonus for me. If I took that away from my Raiden Shogun right now, I believe I'd be under 200%. So, yeah, uh, if you get the chance to summon for this weapon, it's really, really good, especially when it goes to Raiden's Kick. Kick kit uh attack increased by 28 percent of the energy recharge over the base of 100 percent you can gain a maximum bonus of 80 80 attack or 80 percent attack from this so for me i'm over 200 percent, so i'm gaining a little bit more than uh 56 percent i believe i think it is either 56 percent on the button or it's a little bit over you can gain a maximum bonus of 80 percent from this so there's that. Uh, you also gain 30% energy recharge for 12 seconds after using a burst. So think of it this way. I get that 30%, I possibly go over that 300 and I gain an extra attack bonus on top of that. That's pretty dang good. Now, of course, there's other weapons you can use here. You could use the Primordial Jade Winged Spear, which if you really just don't have another five star that you want to use, this could be the go to. You could also use a Skyward Spine. I wouldn't recommend it personally, but it's it's what you could use, but Skyward Spine could work well for the energy recharge, but that's really all that it's going to help you out with, because when you go into your burst with Raiden Shogun, the normal attack uh, speed is not going to really help you because you're going into burst and your attacks after the burst are considered elemental burst damage. So there's that. 
If you do want a good energy recharge weapon that will actually help you out, the catch is a great free to play option. Um, energy recharge gives you 33.8% and then the actual ability increases your elemental burst damage by 32% and your elemental burst crit rate by 12%, which is fantastic. Usually people, if they don't have engulfing lightning, use the catch because there's a reason why. Followed by one of the best four star weapons, but it's not free to play unfortunately, is deathmatch, giving you that extra crit rate and if there's two opponents near or more than two or at least two or more opponents nearby attack is increased by 32 percent and your defense is also increased by 32 percent and if there are fewer than two opponents nearby attack is increased by 48 percent so you have plenty of good options out there now let's talk about artifacts i will tell you this if you are not running emblem of severed fate on raiden shogun you're doing it wrong Emblem of Severed Fate is her best set. It should be what you run on her every single time. I don't care if people try to argue about Thunder Soothers. I don't care if people try to argue about uh, Gilded Dreams for the Dendro stuff. Like, I don't care. Emblem of Severed Fate is her best set bar none. And that's what she should be using. Two piece energy recharge plus 20% and four piece increases elemental burst damage by 25% of the energy recharge. A maximum of 75% bonus damage can be obtained this way. This was built for Raiden Shogun, so you should be using it. However, if you do want to run a four piece Thunder Soothers, if you do want to run a four piece Gilded, if you do want to run a four piece Tenacity in the middle of go for it. Go for it. But I, I highly recommend that you toss those aside and you go with that almost ever fate. I don't think anybody could truly, truly argue against that. And if you do try to argue against it, I'm sorry. I, I just don't agree. You're wrong, in my opinion. But anyways, enough of me trying to start fights in the comments section. Um, so if you're going for your sands, your main target should be energy recharge. So the reason why I have an attack percentage one is because I have more than enough energy recharge for my Raiden Shogun to do what she needs to do. Now, I would definitely say go for energy recharge above attack percentage, but I needed the attack percentage to make sure that my uh, balance between my ER, my crit and my attack was perfect. So. That's why I went for attack percent. And not only that, this rolled godly, if you couldn't tell. Um, not only that, but of course, if you go into goblet, you can do uh, electro damage bonus. I highly recommend this over attack percentage, but you can run attack percentage as well. It's not gonna hurt you. And then of course, for your circlet, either crit rate or crit damage, depending on what you're lacking the most. For me, I already had that crit rate, so I went more so into crit damage. And I also got 10% extra crit rate on top of that. So I was doing, I was, going pretty good and i also got 18 percent extra energy recharge so but your main focuses should be energy recharge crit rate crit damage attack percentage so there you go now of course for me talents wise i think as i said before it depends on what you're going to use her for if you're going to run a sub dps you should go skill then burst if you're going to run a main dps then you should do burst then skill then auto attack now let's go ahead and talk about the actual skill, Transcendence, Baleful Omen. The Raiden Shogun unveils a shard of her Euthymia, dealing electro damage to nearby opponents and granting nearby party members the Eye of Stormy Judgment. Sorry about that, I was like, oh, what? <laughs> eye of Stormy Judgment, when characters with this buff attack and deal damage to opponents, the Eye will unleash a coordinated attack dealing AoE electro damage at the opponent's position. Characters who have the Eye of Stormy Judgment will have their elemental burst damage increased based on the energy cost of the elemental burst during the Eye's duration. The Eye can initiate one coordinated attack every 0.9 seconds per party. Coordinated attacks generated by characters not controlled by you deal 20% of the normal damage. So what's really cool about her, right, is that if you're running her in an overload team, which is why I'm talking about Chevrus as well, that's going to help with your overload so long as you're running a character that is going to give you that pyro bonus. Now, characters that could do that, especially if you're running a sub DPS, you could run a Yoimiya with her, you could run a Hu Tao with her, but if you're not going to do that and you're running a sub DPS, you could run a Zhang Ling, Bennett can help that as well, so you have multiple options that can work with it. 
Let's go ahead and talk about the burst because this burst is a doozy. Uh, burst, secret art, Musu uh, Shinsetsu. Uh, gathering truths unnumbered and wishes uncounted. The Raiden Shogun unleashes a Musu no Hitotachi and deals AoE electro damage using Musu Ishin in combat for a certain duration afterwards. The damage dealt by Musu no Hitotachi and Musu Ishin's attacks will be increased based on the number of Chakra Desideratas or Desiderata, yeah, Desideratas resolve stacks consumed when the skill is used. Sorry, I kind of mess up with that all the time. Uh, Musu Ishin, while in the state, the Raiden Shogun will wield her Tachi in battle, while her normal charge and plunging attacks will be infused with electro damage, which cannot be overridden, which is why Bennett is a very solid option to increase that attack percentage. When such attacks hit opponents, she will regenerate energy to all nearby party ember party animals? <laughs> Nearby party members, and energy can be restored this way once every one second. And this effect can be triggered five times throughout the skill's duration. While in the state, the Raiden Shogun's resistance to interruption is increased and she is immune to electrocharged reaction damage. While Musu Ishin is active, the Raiden Shogun's normal charge and plunging attack damage will be considered elemental burst damage, which is exactly why I was talking about that earlier, is because your normal attacks are not going to be normal attacks when you're in the state. They're going to be burst damage attacks. The effect of Musu Ishin will be cleared when the Raiden Shogun leaves the field, which is why you want to finish the burst completely before you switch off of her, unless it's a strict emergency. Now, Chaka Desiderata, uh, when nearby party members, excluding Raiden Shogun herself, use their elemental burst, the Raiden Shogun can build up resolve stacks based on the energy cost of the, ener of the elemental burst. The maximum number of resolve stacks is 60. The resolve gained from Chaka Chakra Desiderata will be cleared 300 seconds after the Raiden Shogun leaves the field. So using your burst is actually perfect. So for the team that we have today, for example, let's just use that. For me, I would go into my three skill for Yaimiko, activate burst, go into three skill again, go into my uh, Chevrus, use burst skill, then go into my Bennett, use burst, and then go into Raiden Shogun skill, then burst. It's a lot, but you get used to it. Like it, it makes sense in the brain after you after you try it out. First is such a passive, wishes unnumbered when party members uh, gain elemental orbs or particles. Chakra Deserata gains two resolve stacks, which is great. And then Enlightened One, which is the second passive, each 1% above 100% energy recharge that the Raiden Shogun possesses grants her 0.6 greater energy restoration uh, from Musu Ishin, and of course 0.4% extra electro damage bonus, which is why I didn't talk about it before, but if you look, my electro damage bonus is not 46.6%, it's 108.1. So that's why energy recharge is absolutely necessary. Now, you also, like I said before, if you didn't want to run an electro damage cup, like so long as you have the energy recharge, you could run an attack percentage cup on her and be perfectly fine. But that's just me. Now, again, as I talked about before, with this party, here's what I'm running. I'm running a Yaimiko sub DPS to activate those three skills, just to kind of give it give it a little bit. Going into a Chevrus in the back for the overload uh, bonus that she's gonna be helping out with, especially with the attack bonus being all Electro and Pyro characters. And then Bennett using his burst to actually give an attack bonus, followed by going into Raiden Shogun to get the big damage. So, and this is under the impression that Ryan Shogun would be a main DPS. For me, she's not a main DPS, but you can use her that way. So my goal right now is to just kind of get him down. We're going to get these stacks going. So I already have her bullet, which is fantastic. So we're just going to get this going. So I'm going to activate her burst now. And the reason why I'm doing that is so then that way, when we go into that, we're going to activate the skill, activate Chevrus. Oh wait, I went into the wrong way. Boom. And then skill. And then boom. Instant wipe. Now, of course you get this as well for after if they don't make it through that. But my word, just seeing that burst and just seeing her wipe the floor with everything is just fantastic. Raiden Shogun's just awesome. She's just such an awesome character to look at. She's an awesome character to play. And I'm really glad that I rebuilt my Raiden Shogun because before my Raiden Shogun was not looking too good. And now my Raiden Shogun is a lot better. Now, of course, bigger enemies could 
be a lot more beneficial you just have to be careful because again if you're rocking an overload team just like this you don't have a shield which is what you're probably going to need with the uh you know ryan shogun aka if you want to run shields you could use the Zhang Li, you could use the layla you could use other characters just like that however if you're running overload you got to be very careful because you have two like for this one you have two healers but there's still a chance that you can mess it up so ryan shogun's great that's all you really need to know about her And y'all, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about Raiden Shogun. And if you're running Raiden Shogun, what actual, like, you know, builds are you rocking her with? I definitely want to hear y'all's opinion on it. Um, and of course, also fight me on the, you know, Emblem of Severed Fate. <laughs> so anyways, y'all, uh, that's going to be it for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Of course, we'll be back again very soon with another video. And as always, we will catch you in that next video. Please take care and be safe.